Hey guys, what's up? It is party time. It is Wednesday. I had to think about that for a second, but it is hump day, Wednesday, all day long. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, tomorrow on uh, Thursday's episode, uh, congressional candidate from Texas, Julie Clark, is going to join me, and I'm going to debrief you on the debate that I had with Riaz Patel because I read the li- live comments, and some of you people just didn't get it. We're going to have to redefine for you what debate is and uh, talk about that. And I, just for those of you who were offended by a, a gay liberal Muslim, let me just say the word over and over again, gay, 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 gay. Uh, I'm gay now, actually, after hanging out with him. So those of you who are offended by that, well, send me pictures of your boyfriend. Uh, Brandon, George, love you guys. And uh, one of my favorite humans on the planet is here in the hot seat. Not you, Brandon, or you, George. I, I love y'all. But J.P. Sears is here. J.P., what's up, buddy? Chad, <laughs> it, this has been a long time coming. It's it has been. It's so good to meet you in the flesh, yeah. now that you're gay, like really meet you in the flesh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, such a pleasure to be here. We've yeah. been connected for a while, but just so glad to be here in yeah, person with you. Yeah, you and I, we've traded a lot of messages, text messages and mutual friends and stuff like that and we've talked about getting together and we don't do it you're too big well too big i mean look at I, when you ran for governor like you sent me a message that said jp you're now officially a little person <laughs> i'm forgetting about you i'm not going to talk to you anymore but uh, i actually lost your contact it's weird how that happened it's like i don't even know this guy anymore i um have people all the time i say do you know jp sears i say i mean yeah but no yeah you know <laughs> yeah Dude, thanks for coming out. Um, I, I'm sorry that you're going to have to do uh, a little set with uh, Alex Stein. I, I usually try to give everybody a preemptive apology on yeah. that deal. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I get where you're coming from. I've yeah. done his show a couple times via like Skype, and yeah. I, but I've gotten the warnings like it's even more severe in person. So uh, I've got therapy booked for tomorrow. <laughs> It's good to detox and debrief from that. <laughs> um, no, I was telling you, I said, you know, some people, they kind of got twisted off because we had the, the conversation with uh, my friend Riaz Patel yesterday. And I said, so we'll we'll return everybody's uh, erections by having you on. They'll they'll love yes. it'll be. He's not gay. He's not Muslim. Uh, you know, not for cutting heads off babies. Neither is Riaz, to be fair. He's not. <laughs> he's two of the three, though. He is gay and Muslim. Yeah. I, I mean, which is an oxymoron. You can't be both. Yeah, well, man, I think we're living in a world where you can be a lot of things that you're not really able to be. Yeah, yeah. So. This $100 billion aid package for uh, all of these wars and rumors of wars that uh, Joe Biden is proposing, do you have $100 billion laying around? Yeah. Yeah, could you, you put you a little some? dent in that? Yeah, yeah, I could contribute. Yeah. But yeah, I, you know, I like Biden's thinking like, ah, oh, you know, Israel, we really need to help them, so let's send $100 billion to Ukraine. Yeah. Maybe three and a half billion to Israel, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess you print money, and that's just sort of how that works. I got to get Ta- one of those machines. Tax the hell out of people. I'd like one of those machines too. Well, it's weird to me when you got six dollar gas, and um, you know, I you can't even go to a concert. Of course, Joe Biden's battling the concert fees, you know, the ticket fees and things like that. You can't even go to a Taylor Swift concert without getting feed to death. I don't know if that's a word or not, but uh, everything's so damn expensive here now, and they're really trying to shut down travel. Did you see where they polled the people in France, and a lot of folks came back and said that they want to, the young people specifically said that people should limit their air travel to four air flights in their entire life. Wow. That's it. That's that's what they're thinking. Four, four flights in your life. over your life. Yeah. Well, I would imagine those young people in France have been very well indoctrinated by the <laughs> the Green Agenda, World yeah. Economic Forum. I mean, those are the people that'll be, oh, 15-minute cities? Come on in. Do that here. Yeah. I, I can be in prison, but you tell me I'm free? Great. See, I'm surprised that more, like, you hear the stuff about the 15-minute cities, and we're so in love with convenience and this idea that I don't, I mean, I sort of live, I live in a cloistered little area in North Houston. I call it my uppity eco bubble. I'm two miles from any creature comfort that I could want as a first world comfortable American. Uh, that's my 15 minute city. And, and But I hear this stuff, like they want to surveil you. They want to limit your access to the world at large. They want to control the information you're receiving. And they want to make sure that, uh, you know, your travel is limited as, as well as 
you know, it's it's kind of it's kind of like COVID and the stay at home quarantine thing was a trial run for making sure, hey, we're we're going to police you really bad. Yeah, I mean, and you know what else uh, is a 15 minute city prison? Like you, you walk everywhere, <laughs> you don't leave the premise. So that's what they're doing. And one of the descriptions about the 15 minute city proposals I was reading, you mentioned air travel is they would limit yet yeah, you're able to take like three flights uh maybe it was a year yeah. or is like leave the city three times uh only buy three articles of new clothes wow. per year of course no meat and it's like people like they're describing prison they like, are that's that's you what get to have doing. gruel they just put the <laughs> slop boop right on your tray yeah and they every now and then you get a little time out in the yard you know to go see the sun yeah but it's a scary world we're living in it is and yes and i think that's a healthy reaction like if there was a tiger in this room ideally you're scared because yeah. that's gonna fight or flight you're gonna have a better chance of avoiding the thing that could do major damage so i think it's a it's healthy to be afraid of scary things yeah. and then, you know the question is what do you do with it then do you have courage to stand for what's right or do you have cowardice that uh, compels you to acquiesce to right. whatever the thing is group that's terrorizing you do me a favor jp do not mention a tiger in the room around alex stein okay, okay because he'll do that like he'll <laughs> call someone <laughs> We and, are in Texas. It, well, there's more tigers here than anywhere else in the world except India. Yeah. I don't know if you know that or not. Like you could you can legally buy a tiger at like a Love's truck stop. If if it's so you can meet some trucker out there with a live tiger and you can legally transact business. Man, I might try to get a tiger at a truck yeah. stop on my way home. Yeah, tonight. you you call somebody, they can yeah. do it. He's had monkeys in here. No kidding. He's had monkeys and, and um some other people that I would say are close to He that. had an incident with a banana, let's just put it that way. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, not we as won't bring that one up on this as you show. Need to get. He had a he had a certain man eat a banana. Um, <laughs> Alex Stein, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> and we wonder why he can't get advertisers. <laughs> Anything for comedy, sense. bitch. Um, <laughs> uh, Gavin McInnes sent me a text message the other day. He goes, "I'm sure you're busy, but I'm doing a set Friday night. You want to come join? Alex is doing it." And I was like, "I'm out of town. I am conveniently out of town." <laughs> I, I went to that. Did you? How was it, it? It was actually pretty good. Yeah, he's he's getting he's getting a handle on it. Wait, was that good. Alex doing stand up? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever seen him do stand up? No. Um, it's different. It's it's Andy Kaufman ish in mm. that he really you are the audience is the punchline. Okay. Their reaction to what he's doing. I had him open for me one time. Uh, come out and do a, and this one he was first starting come out and do a 15 minute set and of course in the middle of it he jerks off his suit and he's wearing a you know a woman's bathing suit and that whole thing and we're going to get more into you and all of your stuff in the next segment because I've just found that people don't watch the first segment of this show so uh, oh, it's not worth watching th this that, really not the it's first segment of your show Chad it tends to be terrible <laughs> and you know, my shows too it's just but I'm glad you know people don't well watch I this. know it and I, I know it and the world knows it I might but at least we're on the same page with this whole deal and the meteors coming or the rockets or something I don't know I don't know take us out of this cruel cruel world uh, no, Alex opened for me one time, and I was like, I don't think my audience quite gets it. Yeah. You know, it's it's because he doesn't care. He's got brass balls in regards to that. He does. I mean, it, you have to give him that whole yeah. he's got balls. I, one of the first videos I've seen of his, uh, I think it was the first, he was at some sort of pro-abortion rally in New yeah. York City, and he's going around seeing some – very common sense yet very bold things to people and like man that takes balls to do it does and it's not like he's some antifa thug out there harassing people he's coming from a place of like what's right good yeah. morals and uh yeah man i don't think my balls are well, that big well the thing is mine aren't um and i and i've done a lot of stuff man on the street stuff over the years I, i'm like yeah i'm too old for that shit now but i i'm like you know, and I, I don't want to out the guy, but 
I think most people realize this, like Alex on a personal level, he's not like the most conservative political guy, right? He's just a common sense dude who just, and now more and more, he's like watched the idiocy of the crazy progressive left and it's kind of moved him over. You kind of took that journey, didn't you? I mean, kind of just like, eh, I don't really know what I am. I don't really want to be labeled anything. I just want to be a good person. And and yeah. by speaking common sense, you just kind of got thrust into a category, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. I, I would say like I accidentally became conservative yeah. before the whole COVID era. Uh, I was telling you before the show, like I'm not into politics at all. I right. just back in 2018, if you asked me, what's the difference between a Democrat and Republican? Like I, I couldn't even begin to describe it. Right. And, and I'm not like suggesting that's like a good thing to be that dumb and ignorant, <laughs> but that that's, feels good though. It does. It's bliss. <laughs> but then of course, like COVID happens and our freedoms start getting eroded in a very obvious way. And I see where this could go yeah. if we allow it, which helped wake me up to realize freedom is my number one value. I didn't know that before because like, you know, a fish doesn't know it's swimming in water until you right. start taking some of the water away. So I woke up to realize like, man, as an American, I have been ignorant, entitled, and just taking this beautiful God-given precious thing called freedom for granted. Yeah. So then we, you know, as I'm like, well, I stand for freedom and I'm going to use my voice, my platform to call out the forces against freedom while standing for it. And yeah, they, then freedom is actually becoming basically just a conservative value, which mm. blew my mind. Like, I thought this was America where yeah. both sides, like, yeah. agree freedom is what we do here. So, but yeah, and then, you know, as as I was taking this little journey the past few years and then understanding more about our government and politics and also becoming a father, that certainly changes me. Uh, other conservative values just like yep a lot of those are making a lot more sense to me now yeah. it's funny how those words you talk about they've kind of become buzzwords for the left to attack you like if you use the word patriot or freedom yeah. or liberty or you know anything like that and it's like words that we've just like yeah it's just the words we use to describe yeah. america yeah like american yeah oh, you're, you yeah said. how dare you you mega insurrectionist cult <laughs> magats Trump tards. I'm like, no, we're just like, I mean, it, I did, I, God, when was this? This was about a year ago somewhere. And I used a Patrick Henry quote in a video that I made that I had committed to memory a long time ago. And people were like, what is this MAGA crap you're spouting? Oh, wow. And I was like, it's a founding father. Wow. <laughs> like What's it's, this? Magic? Yeah. Patrick Henry was not on The Apprentice, you know? So. It just resonates in people's heads now. They've been that brainwashed. Yeah. Man, and they have been brainwashed. And it's like such a large percentage of people are running around with a domestic terrorist mindset. They're so anti-American. Yeah. And they're, you're for America? Well, I'm against you. Well, this is America, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> you know, you're kind of a terrorist if up. you're against America. Like, were you pro 9-11? What the fuck? It's bad, dude. I mean, that is 100% the way that is. Anyway. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, come back. We're going to get into all things JP. We're going to get into JP. I came out at the beginning of this episode. Oh, yeah, and I do love a ginger. Hey, guys, it is absolutely unthinkable. Uh, and the stuff that's going on in our world, we got recent media distractions most folks never saw coming. Some of us did, though, and our gut told us that something was wrong, and uh, now the headlines are kind of proving all of us right. So our so-called trusted institutions tell you not to worry that everything's fine, and you, you know better, though. And self-reliance doesn't just happen overnight. you got to start somewhere. They're not going to come save you when the crap hits the fan. So you need to start with My Patriot Supply. My Patriot Supply is the country's largest preparedness company. They are uh, more than equipped to stock your shelves. So get rid of the canned vegetables, the box pastas. Their best-selling three-month food kit provides delicious breakfast, lunch, and dinners that last up to 25 years. That's amazing. Uh, the, the meals offer over 2,000 calories every day with a balance of protein and carbs to keep you fed and ready in the event of an emergency. Just add water and heat and then eat. Uh, so strengthen your food supply with this three-month food kit from My Patriot Supply. Visit my special website, 
preparewithchad.com to get ready. Order now, fast, free, discreet shipping. That's preparewithchad.com. We'll be right back. All right, guys, sitting here with my buddy J.P. Sears. Um, you drove in this morning. Thanks for doing that. And um, I was, where was I? Kansas City recently, and they've got you. You know, you go to these comedy clubs, you'll see the posters of the shows that are coming up. You know, they got these big posters with the comedian's face on there. But most of these older comedy clubs have the, fr- I call them the framed picture. That's, that's their comics that have done well there, and people love them, and they recognize their face. It's usually a picture of them on, sometimes they'll do a headshot, but I like the ones where they're on stage. And there's JP right there, right there in a framed mug. Framed, wow. I mean, I, that's, yeah. I didn't realize that, <laughs> and uh, I feel the same about myself learning that. Yeah. Was that the Kansas City Improv? No, that was the Comedy Club of Kansas City. That's the yeah. one that's like 30 minutes. I don't know why they even call it Kansas City. It's technically Kansas City. It's like 30 minutes south of downtown. Yeah. It's down there. And, and I love it. I mean, we did, I don't, I don't know, five shows there in three nights and uh, all over the place. But I, I love, I like, I kind of follow your breadcrumbs around the country. You're out there doing it and kicking ass, doing stand up. And uh, at what point in time did you say, I think I want to get on stage and do this? Well, yeah, the, the first stand up show I did was November 2017. Mm-hmm. At that point, I'd been doing videos for about three years. So, you know, a, a while before that, I don't know, a handful of months before that was the like idea of like, well, maybe I could like, yeah, do something on stage. And, and I'm, I'm also really grateful that I, I was so, I, I would call it blissfully ignorant to, the the challenge of doing stand up mm-hmm. it's vastly different than video comedy it's kind of like hey it's both comedy it's like they're both music mm-hmm. but very different instruments one's a guitar one's a saxophone that's a good point so yeah uh, i guess back whatever that is 7 or so years ago started stand up and out of everything i get to do which i i love everything i do the stand up's my favorite you're there i mean you you're with live audiences all the time you've got that energy of the crowd yeah. it's a dance it's connective it's just so freaking fulfilling yeah i enjoy it man there's no algorithm yeah there's no screen there's no filter between you just transference of ideas and hopefully they laugh at it too absolutely and, and like the transference of ideas and the energy exchange it's like mm-hmm. the the room becomes like the holding the circuit and the the information, the energy, you know, the laughter becomes contagious or lack of laughter is contagious. So it's just like this really cool energy circulation. It's like intimate in a non-sexual way. Yeah, I get it. It's, I love it. It's one of them. It's maybe the most fun thing I do. Yeah. You know, I, I just, people keep saying, well, you can't do this forever. And I was like, I think I can. Yeah. I think I can. I mean, one, if there if there's if there's a check with my name on it in that city, I, I'd like to go pick that up. <laughs> and if I can have fun with everybody along the way, do you do you get a lot of hate crap like sent your way, or do you just ignore the comments, ignore the messages? Yeah, I I, I, def, I definitely ignore it when it yeah. comes. And I wouldn't say I get a lot of the hate crap. Yeah. A few years ago, when I like kind of change the mission of my work there was certainly like a wave of hate you know the the old They're some of pissed. the old audience yeah. yeah like why are you you know you're you're not on board with everything that you're told to be on board with jp so right. you know you're a racist transphobic misogynist of course yeah all the things but yeah now I mean, I, I'm actually surprised that there isn't more hate that comes in. You know, I, for example, on the YouTube videos, you can see the like versus dislike ratios. Yeah. And almost all the videos are 99% like versus 1% dislike. I'm like, well, that that's great. I thought it would have been a little bit more dislike. Right. And then when I, when I see the hateful comments or a smear article it just doesn't register yeah and yeah i kind of yeah. passed all that stuff I, I it came to my mind because when we were talking about doing live shows i've I occasionally will get these people who will say i'm going to come see you at the show and kick your ass or something like that i'm like i don't think so 
And maybe I like having my ass beat. I don't. You don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, it could be something doing I enjoy. Doing you a favor. I'll like, put you on the list, VIP. <laughs> come backstage. <laughs> I'm going to come commit a felony and <laughs> risk years in jail just to teach you a lesson that you probably won't even learn. Exactly. Just just for telling jokes and, you know, putting content out there. Oh, social media is a beast, dude. You do it well. I mean, you've grown a huge following, and um, it's it's always impressive to see people. Because, again, you say, oh, you guys are just – you just make videos for a living. You just sit there on social Social media, you guys don't really do anything for the world. Uh, if it were easy, anybody could do it, and it, it's not easy to to. It's a balance, right? To to be able to build it, to keep it, maintain it. I always say it's hard to build an audience. It's easy to lose one. Mm. Uh, and you're fighting the social media big tech overlord gods out there that are fighting against everything you do as well. Yeah. Is and it, have you navigated through kind of the changes of social media? Yeah. It, of if it used to be I could burp on a video and 30 million people watched it. Right. Now it's getting harder. But yeah, I mean, it's weird. It's like, especially as you mentioned, like the platforms, you have to fight the platforms just to be on right. there. You know, if you're not a toe in the line liberal, it's like, you know, if you worked at Whole Foods, you show up and, you know, the store manager is trying to kick you out mm -hmm. while you're trying to do your job for the, it's just weird. So you know, I, navigating that, obviously, censorship is just a major thing on the yeah. major big tech platforms. So personally, like anytime I'm making a video, I'm I've got the censorship consideration in my mind. What's being censored yet? How can I say what I need to say mm -hmm. and doing comedy? It, it kind of makes it easier. Like it, if we were doctors and. I assure you, we're not doctors, <laughs> far from it. You know, doctors, like, they speak literal. Like, hey, here's the information on this uh, topic or right. the truth about this you know, pharmaceutical product. It's very literal language, very easy for the AI censorship garbage to flag and then take the video down or kick you off the platform. Mm -hmm. But being a creator, as a comedian, you get to ask, like, well how can I creatively say that thing without actually saying it? Thus you add creativity. So some things you express through metaphors or analogies or my particular humor language is mostly satire. Yeah. So when you, you take the body language and tonality out of the satire, like if the AI is just reading the script of words, it's most likely saying like, well, this guy's just reinforcing the narrative. Right. He's good. So I think those are a couple factors that uh, one have allowed me to still be on the big tech platforms, yeah. which though I don't agree with so much about the platforms, they're a way to connect with people. And I like people and I want to connect with people who want to connect with me. Yeah. But man, I mean, that that's been a, the censorship thing's been the biggest change on social media uh, in the past bitch. few years. You know, years ago, I, I decided to stick with where I came from in terms of the cowboy hat and all that kind of stuff, and it kind of became a shtick, and, and that's just people identify. It's an identifier and stuff, and it's a pain in the ass traveling around the country with a cowboy hat and a guitar and all that stuff all the time. Where did the idea go? Like, one, you're like me. You make a very ugly woman, and, and that's a beautiful thing. I know that... that touches you like it touches me it does it's um, just really and souls you, recognized like we don't make good trannies at all <laughs> um and uh i don't know if you've seen it or not i i actually i created created the vagio dilator for the uh oh no kidding for the new for the new i love to every now and then just put this on the microphone so everybody can hear that the it's, vagio dilator yeah i stick it through my chad pads uh oh, my yeah. chad pads um menstruating pads for for the for the new girl in you yeah and like uh, when, we, when it's time to hit the red carpet that, that feels that feels inclusive yeah it is this and it is just, what we need just, more of in this country it, i hate it keeps your new vagina open nice it dilates uh but when when did you come up with the idea for just i'm gonna just rip up a suit and put that on and tell the news yeah because that's that's a great shtick right yeah yeah so for context if you don't know what Chad's talking about because you don't watch my work. First of all, I'm offended. What's wrong with you? <laughs> but I, I do a reoccurring uh, type of video. It's, you know, I'm a newscaster and it's just yeah. parodying the propaganda networks of CNN, all those places. 
So that idea came, it was right after the 2020 election. And, you know, between the election and inauguration in January, like, things were just getting nuts. Like we have the, you know, the election just happened. Then the AP press comes out and says, Hey, we declare Biden the winner. It's like, dude, you have no authority to declare it. And you're setting right. us up for some hostile civil war. Like if like, you know, the actual people that should declare it, come out and say like Trump actually won, but yours it's just, ugh, it was just ugly. So yeah, I was, I was just wanting to do some videos on what was going on. I'm like, well, you know, uh, yeah, let me use a newscaster format. I'll do mm -hmm. that. So I, I made that first one, and then it's like more information is coming out. So, okay, the next video, I'll do that newscaster thing again. And you know what? As a way of sort of symbolizing how, at least psychologically, our country's being torn apart, I just started progressively ripping the suit <laughs> from one video to the next. And it, it was just to symbolize basically the state of our psychology in our country. Yeah, it's just, it's just everything's falling apart. Yeah. Of entropy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. And if you haven't seen a J.P. Sears video, please go to social media right now. Just J.P. Sears. And, and JP, yeah, put, put the stuff on there. Okay. All right. Got to go to another break. Got to go to another break. I love these breaks. They pay the bills. Keep the lights on around here. It helps Glenn Beck stay employed. It's, this is all about Glenn. Yeah. All right. Are you ready for uh, a health revelation that could change your life? Listen up. In this modern age, it's more important than ever to take care of your liver. You probably ask yourself, why should I? It's simple. Your liver is a powerhouse with five key functions that greatly affect how you look and feel. These include weight management, energy levels, cholesterol, hormone health, and brain health. And the problem is that we are in a silent health epidemic. If you were to add up all of the residents of South Carolina, Indiana, Massachusetts, Arizona, Virginia, Florida, and Texas, you would still not get the 100 million Americans that have a sluggish, fatty liver that makes people gain weight and experience chronic fatigue. Probably even your liberal neighbor has it. So don't be a liberal. <laughs> Start taking care of your health. Try the product that I recommend, Liver Health Formula. It's an all-natural supplement packed with clinically proven botanicals to help you recharge and protect your liver. By going to my dedicated page, you will also get a free bottle of nano-powered omega-3. That's a total discount of 64%, and you won't find this offer anywhere else. So order today at GetLiverHelp.com slash Chad. That's GetLiverHelp.com slash Chad. Remember, a healthy liver is a happier you. We'll be right back. Did you see that clip um, of uh, Hillary Clinton when the protester stood up in the middle of the meeting and was calling her out on stuff and she was telling him to sit down and shut up? Did you see that no. clip? Let's take a look at that clip. I want to get a reaction. Um, I love Hillary Clinton. She's I mean, she, she's she the just best. is the kind of person that you want to cuddle you want her on your side <laughs> i just keep telling folks there's no one in the world that's had 56 good friends commit suicide <laughs> <laughs> they just have not but, had but if she wasn't such a good person like how many more would it have been like You're right. you have to think how many suicidal friends has hillary saved through her just warm loving nature yeah yeah. If it was me, it probably would have been 560. It, probably so. Yeah. I mean, you p probably would have depleted your community. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have been, I have no neighbors anywhere. Uh, play clip number two, guys. For NGOs as well as international organizations. So honestly, um, we're, I'm sorry. We've got two more people to hear from. You, you have a chance. Well, I'm not sorry. You sit down and we're going to let other people, we're going to let other people talk. I'm going to turn now to Frank Mugisha. Frank Mugisha is a leading civil rights organizer who is. President Joe Biden is calling for $100 billion of funding for Israel, Taiwan, and Ukraine. And we're supposed to just bundle these together and pretend like we're going to rush to World War III and we're all just going to let him sit here. Okay. I'm sorry. You know. This is not some, this is not the way to have a conversation. If you want to have a conversation, you're welcome to come talk to me afterwards. Sure. Yeah. Okay, you're right. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're going to wait for me, right? I, I will wait for you and I will listen to you and I will respond sure to you. Believe, but right Well, that just the is that the just American people's voice are what needs to be heard. Yeah, they are being heard. The president is not speaking to the American people. 
Well, that's your opinion. That's your opinion. But, but well, then sit down. We've heard your opinion. Thank you very much. Now we're going to turn to people who are on the front lines of working on behalf of human rights. But it's not, it's not free speech when you are disrupting everybody else's opportunity up. to speak. She's not handling it well. No. She... All right, go ahead and cut it. You can hear her crusty veg just drying up even further, dude. I mean, it's like she's uh, that, pissed. She's ready to suicide somebody. Oh, that yeah. guy should be very, very careful. Oh, yeah. Around I think any she... any flights of stairs, any <laughs> if there's any loose rope around him, I'd be careful of that. Any loaded guns that happen to sneak up on him from behind. I think he's number 57. <laughs> yeah. He's on the way out. Yeah. I'm sorry, but you're dead. <laughs> or just see me after the conference. Uh, yeah. I'll, yeah, Hillary, I'm sure. He's like, I'm sure you'll wait for me. She probably would <laughs> yeah, she, with a Derringer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> couple guys in black masks waving by your yeah. side for you they find him they'll find him down by the river in the trunk of a car <laughs> she is a peach she's yeah. something else huh uh i'm excited for you know because hillary if if someone hasn't been following what's going on she is not an elected leader therefore she has a lot of authority but I'm excited for her idea to be implemented of deprogramming trump supporters mm -hmm. I think it's i mean I'm at the top of the list. I'm oh, excited yeah. for it. I can't wait to just think correctly. And also, <laughs> you know, I I feel for Hillary because here she is. She wants to deprogram people that support the opposition. But it's it's just it's got to be hard for her to figure out why people won't support her and don't like her when she's the type of person that wants to deprogram you if yeah. you don't support her. And again, that protester, all he was saying is, hey, would you condemn the $100 billion deal that we talked about earlier that Joe Biden is proposing? And she's like, nah, we're not going to get into all that. And um, you could see just the blood pressure rising. I would love to know what a deprogrammed mind feels like, you yeah. know, like, OK, report just in uh, after the Fourth of July celebration at the White House, uh, White House officials, particularly Secret Service, have uncovered a little bag of cocaine and we're supposed to go, oh, that's cool. <laughs> that, yeah, that's what the deprogram brain yeah. sounds like. Oh, that's cool. Wow. I also want to do more pharmaceuticals right now. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to wow. CVS. You know what? That reminds me. I'm late for a booster. Yeah. <laughs> I need to uh, CNN starts in 27 <laughs> minutes. Got to be. I wonder be what Rachel time. Maddow has on today. Uh, I'm going to go down there. Oh, there's a Travis Kelsey video. I'm going to go get a booster and a flu shot. Mm, I love Taylor Swift. I should go back to college and study gender. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if I took out a $100,000 loan on underwater basket weaving degrees, they'll pay it off in the next election. Yeah, Chad, I just like to imagine getting clockwork oranged with just your eyes pried open and it's just CNN and MSNBC. Yeah. <laughs> Plug them up to the shock machine until they hold up five fingers, and I say it's six. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift keep getting put on the, the TV for some reason. I stayed at the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I stayed. I stayed at the um, Hard Rock Casino Hotel the other night in Tulsa for an event, and down at the end of the hall there was this huge ten foot Taylor Swift on the wall, you know, and I was like, I felt, I felt watched. I just felt. <laughs> watched by taylor did you guys see where um with this um this stuff going on with israel and hamas they've got a new website out it's artists for ceasefire.org uh artists that's the number four ceasefire.org uh by the way guys those of you in the live chat doesn't mean we're, give, we're not giving you the website because we agree with these people <laughs> uh but there's a message to joe biden to advocate for a ceasefire, and it's a list of people like uh, America Ferreira, Alyssa Milano, of course, Andrew Garfield, Channing Tatum, Dua Lipa, Macklemore, Mark Ruffalo, Michael Moore, um, Wanda Sykes, John Stewart, I think um, Bradley Cooper, these kind of people were on there. I'm sure Hamas is just quaking in their turban. Um, uh yeah, I mean the power of I mean Melissa Milano. Yeah, what, she Melissa Milano is. Alyssa. Us? Oh my God! What are yeah, we? Gonna, I mean, I mean, look at her. Should we her? raise That's the her. white flag, guys? I mean, we should quit right now and have. But, but man, I mean, thank you to these celebrities for taking the time to put their names on yeah. 
something. I mean, it's it's a powerful <laughs> difference. I gotta. Do you know who Tim Kennedy is? Oh yeah. So Tim's been on the show. Yeah, Tim's yeah. amazing. He's a fr- he's just talk about a man who serves our country big time daily. So, so he he the Afghanistan debacle. He goes to Afghanistan to yeah. rescue Americans. Uh, I believe currently he's in Gaza. He's in Gaza rescuing. So. Melissa Milano puts someone like Tim Kennedy to shame. Yeah. Like all Tim's doing is putting his life on the line and saving lives. But yeah. Melissa Milano. Whenever Tim was here last, I said, I said, you know, what are you doing this weekend? He goes, well, when I leave here, I'm headed to the house. I'm getting 100,000 cash and I'm going to Sudan. <laughs> he said, because there's 20,000 Americans in there that nobody's talking about and we got to get them out. Then I'm like, well, I'm, I was thinking about drinking a little tequila and maybe catching a festival. Yeah. Um, like... <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I think I'm a good guy, yeah. Chad. And I'm like, yeah, I was going to, you know, we have chickens. I was going to take my neighbors some yeah. eggs. And like Tim's like, well, I'm <laughs> going to rescue people and I will get shot at. It's like, damn I it, was, I am a bad person. I damn was it. on the phone with the guy who's kind of leading that rec- rescue mission uh, in Gaza. I was on the phone with him last week. He called me up. I said, are you going to Israel? He goes, I tried to stay out of it. I was like, you know, I'm going to. I'm thinking about changing the oil in the truck uh, here. and um, But no, uh, we urge your administration and all the world leaders to honor all the lives of the Holy Land and call for and facilitate a ceasefire without delay. I mean, Joe Biden, he took that message so seriously, uh, he went out and sunned himself at Rehoboth Beach, Yeah, uh, took another vacation. So that's that's good. They, they, they're doing God's work. They are. Uh, I saw a clip of joe on the beach and my favorite part of the clip he and jill were just walking along yeah by the way you have to like what's it like being jill you know the puppet masters jill we need you to walk with yeah. joe on the beach and she's like God, i hate this guy i hate this mother <laughs> okay i'll tell him where to go <laughs> somewhere in the clip like they're just walking and all of a sudden joe points to the ocean yeah <laughs> like dude is that when he noticed he's by the ocean <laughs> oh, jill, did you see that yeah wow it's a wave what is that? Is that a, I don't know what that is. That would have to be, uh, that's, that's a full-time job. Oh, man, I'd imagine. I mean, you see, like, during a, one of their little puppet speeches, and Jill comes on, does the wave, and you see, like, her purpose there. She's trying Make sure to, he doesn't walk the other direction. Yeah, take him. Don't make sure he doesn't shake hands with ghosts and get him off the <laughs> stage. Don't let him fall off the stage. Yeah. <laughs> But you know, like him pointing to the ocean, I said that whenever he called out the dead congresswoman uh, last year, and then he's shaking hands with ghosts. It's like the man is so old and demented that his toes are hanging on the precipice of eternity, and he can see a realm that we he's, can't quite see. He's just connected to the yeah, other side. That's he's just good there. Point. He's just there. Uh, We're the ignorant ones for not having recognized that, but see? thank you for pointing it but out. But a reprogrammed mind would have seen shit like this. Exactly. So. All right, cleaning your guns, one of those things you got to do. If you're going to own one, it's a dirty job, but you got to do it. The patches are messy. The rope cleaning elements like the boar snake hides the dirt. It's not good enough. I found a better solution. It's Barrel Buddy. I was just talking to the guys over at Barrel Buddy. They're an awesome company, and, you know, they're they're working real hard to get this product out there, try to get it in some retail stores and things like that, but they need your help. They need your support. So if you've been on the fence about trying Barrel Buddy, check them out. The Barrel Buddy compresses to fill the interior of your gun's barrel, and it will clean the rif- rifling gr- grooves it's composed of polymers that won't leave behind uh, particles so it's safer uh it scrubs it collects particulates it absorbs the remaining residue buffs the interior surface of your rifle clean or any of your guns and uh, it lubricates the firearm while you're cleaning it and uh it's an important part of being a responsible gun owner you got to clean those things and barrel buddy is a new concept it's a better concept it's a safer concept so get some today you're going to love them go to barrelbuddy.com that's barrelbuddy.com we'll be right back if uh if somebody wants to come see you live where where do they find your schedule best place is awaken with jp.com awaken with jp.com yeah chad i wanna i don't mean to call you out do it but i'm gonna call you out come on viewers <laughs> About 15 minutes into the show, I realized those aren't real buildings. It's like a like a painting or something. No, it's a real this picture. Is, this whole it, thing is fake. They threw a, a graphic. That's downtown Fort Worth. But watch this. But give us give a big screen out there. I'm gonna throw the uh, vagio dilator. 
That's like a 15 minute city. It's just <laughs> yeah. it's just a wall. It of makes you feel facade. like you're somewhere. <laughs> That's like that sphere in Vegas, you know, where you go in that dome and and you just you're suddenly you're in another world right there. Yeah. No, that's uh, that's uh, I want to say Third Street, Fort Worth, um, looking towards Main Street right there, and uh, yeah, they went and took that picture. This is the oldest set in the building. My set is. I've been in this. Mine is the only one that hasn't changed. You know why? Because I'm not a needy bitch mm. like most of the hosts. Yeah, around here, it's it's good. I think. It's good to be content. We need more Americans not being needy bitches. I mean, they probably spent a uh, hundred grand building this thing out, maybe, and uh, pennies, pennies from Glenn Beck's nose when he blows it. <laughs> I mean, we got we got big money around here. We got big money. I don't know if you guys have checked out theblaze.com, our new website. Which, by the way, we've now uh, we did something. We we kicked all the advertisers out of uh, you know how when you go to xyz.com news site and all the pop-ups are there right. and the advertisers and you know you have toenail fungus and stuff like that no more of hmm. that on the blaze.com so now what we have is this thing called blaze plus where you get not only the network but you get the the the, the news site and all that so now we can call shit out like for real without <laughs> any fear of censorship no, none of the Hunter Biden crap getting censored or COVID was crap or the yeah. fake stuff. We don't have to deal with that anymore. That it's sounds pretty, like freedom to me. It's freedom. And you got to give it. I mean, these guys work around here. They worked really hard to get that thing up and running. So this is my little free advertisement for that on, on that. Um, and it, we launched it yesterday. And it's it's good looking site. And I, it's it so inspired me that I texted the president of the network this morning. I said, I want to go back to writing some op-ed pieces that now I know they won't get buried somewhere. <laughs> and they said, he said, oh, we'd, we'd, we'd love for you to write some more. And um, I literally walked out of my dressing room and walked down towards to where the water is. Like, it's just a little 50-yard walk. Someone met me halfway there and said, here, you're going to start writing again. for the." Oh, wow. uh, and I was like, news travels fast around this joint. Wow. Or, or there's a lot of surveillance in this Something. joint. Something. I've decided everything is microphoned around here everything yeah. we're literally talking in yeah, the microphone literally, but like bro, even when i'm taking a poop oh, okay <laughs> I've, yeah. I've never i've yeah I, I try to do that once a day here in this building just because i mean they filmed robocop here and i just want to do this do i want to do the do in the same pot where peter weller might have possibly yeah done, you know By the back way, in the 80s robocop yeah I remember I, I was born in 81 and when RoboCop came out, I was definitely way too young to watch it because it's very bloody, very vulgar yeah. language. But my dad was kind of like, you know, like, <laughs> let's make a it's going to be good you. for you. <laughs> but man, I have fond memories of that movie. Yeah. I think it was an underrated movie. It was right we, here, this building. I stand with RoboCop. <laughs> We're in the very building. Wow. Yeah. You could feel the uh, the presence in the atmosphere. I, I kind of could of RoboCop, yeah. filmed exclusively in Dallas. All of the scenes, I think, except for one in that movie, filmed right here in this building. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. So was Barney. So was all of the Barneys, except for the first season. Like purple dinosaur. Purple Barney? dinosaur. Yeah. That deal. So when I walk in, that's that gay feeling when you come in. Yeah. Which is like suddenly it's that's like, I like was. men. I like men. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> You I love men. Me. We're all a happy gender we, family. Yeah, we are. It's. Uh, I feel very gender queer. Um, I don't know know exactly what that is. Nobody does, but no, on. no one does. I've yet to hear a good definition of the whole thing. Yeah, non-binary and queer. It's. I'm definitely this thing. What's that mean? Well, I don't really know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when I was a kid, you know, we I went to public schools and things weren't nearly as progressive and inclusive as public schools are now but we in northwest ohio we we did some inclusivity we, you know at recess we would always play smear the queer yeah and smear the queer it's a fun game very inclusive and then looking back at my childhood you know because we call each other queers all the time and just yeah. it was meant to be an insult didn't necessarily mean anything but now people are proud to say hey i'm queer but also it was an insult when I was a kid. And I think the difference is calling someone like, hey, you're a queer. Apparently that's an insult, but saying you're queer 
yeah. without the A. Yeah. Now we're loving inclusive language. Took the A out. It's like people yeah. of color versus colored people. Yeah. It's a very distinct difference. One makes you a racist. <laughs> the other makes you woke and accepting and tolerant yeah. and diverse. Um, yeah. Uh, saying a building is is for one color person only these days completely acceptable yeah and we're gonna divide college students up based on race yes. because we are not racist but, um, i i well, don't you're doing the same thing segregation did it's just it's not racist we thing. label like, it great. differently yeah it's yeah a different label it's it's not jim crow it's uh crow jim i don't know just flip the words maybe it's all okay yeah. Where are you headed to next? What's uh, what's next for you as far as live shows? Do you remember? Next, uh, I've got Virginia Beach coming up. That's fun. I've never done Virginia Beach. Me either. That'll be my first yeah. time there. Um, I think it's. I hear it's a to. good town for what we do. Is it and who we are? Awesome. Yeah. I I hope that's true. I'm sure it will be. Yeah. Uh, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, then one of my favorite cities, Nashville. Love doing it there. Be there. Yeah. So um, you doing a theater there? You doing Zanies or do you know doing Zanies? Yeah. I I love occasionally I'll do theaters in like smaller towns you mm -hmm. know don't have a comedy club and but I love doing the the clubs because over a weekend doing anywhere from four to nine shows yeah and yes it's a lot of work yes it's a little more time away from home but I love the reps yeah. it's just like getting you like do you like doing the multiple shows on a night I do uh, yeah yeah. Yeah, it, it, when it's I first, work, that's for sure. When yeah. it first started, I thought it was going to kill me. Yeah. But now it's like, you know, you run a couple miles. It's like, dude, that was super hard. But then you, you acclimate, you get used to used it. To and it. now yeah. like 10 miles feels easier. Yeah. Awakenwithjp.com. We're not done. Hang tight. We'll be right back. Yeah. Hey, guys, go check out JP on the road. Check out everything he's doing. You do a little search for JP Sears. You're going to find him. You're going to find him. It's going to pop up. And, uh, and make sure you're following all of his stuff, his his socials, his YouTube, his Rumble. You got the deal. You're doing the weekly show on Rumble and uh, piping in some live stuff. Yep. Weekly live show on Rumble. It's called Lies You Can Trust. Uh, also, just just had a children's book come out. Uh, That's right. Yeah. With contribution Brave Books. To, yeah, with Brave Books. They're just amazing. But contribution to what i think is the most important demographic in our world which is children yeah. they're innocent they're sponges and there's a lot designed to invade their minds so i love it we need to protect children and we need to give them positive alternatives to the yeah. woke crap out there you're a good soul man you've always been an encouragement to me you've always sent me the encouraging messages and they usually come at the times when i need them so oh, i appreciate well. you brother thanks for coming Absolutely. on hanging out good luck with alex stein and uh and uh, check him out out on the road as well. Hey, listen, by the way, if you want to come find me, I will be in, um, I will be in, where will I be? I will be in Tulsa next week, three nights at the uh, Looney Bin, and then Wichita, Kansas the week after that. And then I'm going to be in Marble Falls, Texas. So watch Chad.com for all the fun stuff is. Awaken with JP. Thanks, buddy. We'll talk to you all tomorrow. Love you. God bless you. Bye. Marble Falls is about an hour.